there. In this video, I want to talk about a library called Torch to Rock, and we want to have some fun with the Jupyter Notebook. So I decided to change a little bit uh, the way I'm explaining the papers. So I want to be more practical and write more codes. Uh, maybe that can be helpful also. I'm trying to fix my uh, camera and also the screen resolution and try to zoom in and zoom out and thank you for your comments and suggestions i will try to include all of them so what we want to do here is using a uh, torch drag library and torch drag now is in version 0 0.2 and uh, for doing that we need to install it and if i search it for torch drag let me See how can I install it? Yeah, I can use it by Torch, uh, sorry, Torch Drag, and it is 0 0.2. And I can basically install that and start writing some code. I'm setting this notebook to, um, let's say, graph operation so basically in this video we want to work on creating some graph uh, training some neural network and see how we can do with torch drug and the good thing about it is is it that doesn't need to be only the molecules and drugs to train the graph neural network by using this library if you have any sort of data and you want to have a model for link prediction for node classification and basically working with graphs or graph, graph classification in the uh, overall it can be useful so I'm installing this I will pause my video until this being done okay so I've installed that and installation was not easy because you need to be careful that when you install this you will install Torch scatter from PyTorch Geometric, and you need to install also the PyTorch. So, I'm adding some hint here that uh, simply if you have Conda, maybe you can install that by just using uh, this command by installing the Torch drug and uh, installing the dependencies like PyTorch and scatter torch. But I'm also adding this. I just want to show you uh, about this one. So be careful that if you install, uh, first of all, if you have installed the CUDNN version and CODA version, and for example, your CODA version is in uh, format like Torch 1.91 and CODA version 11.1. So install this scatter Torch. And for example, with this command, me copy and paste this one here so you need to have a uh, torch scatter and torch cluster but the version should match with the coda version and the torch version that you have already installed so if you open the torch uh, installation so we have a page here and here when you select this based on the CODA version. Some of some of the older version are not here, but for example, if you have Torch version 1.8, CODA 11. So basically, I'm adding that also here. So basically can do something like this. So you first need to install PyTorch that you have, which is currently 1.8, CODA 11. Point one, and you have to install the same version for the Torch Scatter and Torch cluster. If you do not do this, you will get different errors like the undefined symbol or bus error or stuff like that. So, but if you install it correctly, you will get that. And then we import Torch drag as TD, that would work. So I will keep this. I just want to empty my cell and yeah so we have the torch track 
let's start with it. What you want to do with this is basically based on the example in the uh, website, I, I think we can use that example to find out how things is going going on here for the torch drug. Suppose you have an edge list and that edge list is uh, creating the connection between edges. For example, I can say node number zero is connected to node number one. Node number one is connected to node number two. And node number two is connected to node number three. And node number uh, three is connected to node number four. For example, this is a graph. So uh, by having this, I can import let me import that. I can uh, I can say from torch drug import data. So by having this kind of uh, edge list, I can say data graph, and I pass that edge list here. And number of nodes I have is uh, from zero to four. So um, Maybe I can say four connected to just just for simplicity. You can say four connected to zero. I will show you a different uh, way to doing that. But suppose number of nodes is in this case is five. You know. So by having that, I can create a graph. And let me do it. So I import this and I run this. So now I can say graph dot visualize and I can see the graph and see how it is look like. So it said matplotlib is currently using aggregate. Uh, so we should add the matplotlib cell matplotlib in line. Yeah. So you can see it started from zero to one. 1 to 2, 2 to 3. So if I don't have like this edge and I plot it, that would be uh, this graph. So data can create a graph. It can also create molecules. So for example, we can say we have a molecule and from data we can say uh, molecule that from so uh, when we want to import the molecule we can import it from a smiles a smiles means simplified molecular input line entry system so i'm adding this uh, as a note here and also maybe i can add like a markdown and say loading molecule based on a smile yeah so this would be uh, from and here I need to mention what is the a string and so in a smiles we, we define atoms and atoms are represented by a standard abbreviation of the chemical elements and for example if we want a carbon we can say just C and also we can define the bounds. So the bounds will be defined by different symbols like dot, equal, sharp, sign, stuff like that. Like double, triple, quadrate, uh, quadruple bounds can be represented with different. I don't want to go to the detail about the bounds and stuff like that. Just as an example, we can say, so we have C1 and uh, double bond CC same and again C1 so there is a website uh, for searching different uh, molecules based on the smile so as an example let me close this page and this page as an example if I copy and paste this in here and search for it so it give us this is a benzene benzyl so um, I, I don't know, I can search for like something and it will give me the smile version of it. I'm not expert in the 
chemical science, but uh, just an example that we can write any smile here, a smile's pattern here, and we will get the molecule. And what we can do with it, same as what we had with the graph, so we can visualize that molecule. So we can say visualize, and this would be the molecule. By having this molecule also, we can get some node features, edge features, the shape, stuff like that. And for example, the node features for, for this one would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 6 by, so each of these has some feature, for example. Let me give you, that would be a graph and each, each node. If you uh, don't know about graph neural network, you can look at some of my video last year. So we will have some feature for each node. So we can say molecule node feature. And this is the feature of each node. And if you see, there are some repetition because molecules are here are repeated, some, some of them. And you can see, for example, their shape, which is six node. Each one has 67 feature. So, so far we have, we have seen that in the data, we can define molecules and also the graph. But this is not only related to data. We have models. And for models, uh, I can define graph isomorphism network as, in, as an example. Let me also open the torch drug, torch drug documentation. There is a good documentation here about what models it's supporting and stuff like that. So in data, we've seen the graph. And also we can apply edge weight, number of nodes, stuff like that. And also, yeah, we can define molecule, we can define protein, we can define packed graph, which is a sparse graph, I, I think. And there is also a dictionary. So we have a key and value, and we can define it data in the terms of dictionary. So that is for data. If you go to the model, so we have different, different model. One of them that I like to talk about it now is the graph isomorphism network or GIN, this one, graph neural network. So there are knowledge graph reasoning model, graph neural network and protein sequence encoders. And uh, have this in mind that this is torch drug, but you can use it for any purposes that you can uh, find a similarity between that task can be solved by graph neural network with the similarity that you find in the uh, protein molecules and chemical science. So, for example, if you see a protein bird, how that how does that work? That can give you some idea for another problem. For example, like document information extraction and creating a knowledge graph from it. So let's see the graph isomorphism network. So we can say model graph isomorphism network. And if you don't know how to use that, we can come back here and see what parameters we can pass. We have input dimension. And we should say how many uh, input how, how many is the input dimension and we have the hidden dimension which is a list and then we have edge input dimension and these are optional so it's good that we can have edge input dimension it means that the graph can not only learn based on the nodes it can learn based on the edge input and there are some parameters like shortcut use shortcut or not and also batch normalization, we can pass it. And there is a concat hidden, which is concat hidden representation from all layer as output. So, because, you know, when we create a graph, uh, it is simply a neural network without any training target. And how we wanna use that graph for training a downstream task. So one of them is to concat all the hidden representation from all layers and set it as output. And on top of that, we can have another layer like MLP or anything 
and apply our task. We, we call it task in graph neural network. So for example, to adapt it for the uh, prediction of the graph, so we can define a classification task by the binary cross entropy uh, criterion on top of it. So if, we, if I back here and I say so we had input dimension, and that would be an integer. I, I will create this. I don't know for now. And I have hidden dimensions. And suppose hidden dimension is 100 or 64, 64, oh, I cannot write, and 64 and 64. Four hidden dimension. And I say, yeah, I want to do batch normalization. And I want to do concat hidden representation as output. So I set this to true. So we can create this. That would be a model. And this model is very simple model. We don't we don't have any data there. And it is graph isomorphism network. If you want to see inside, it is graph uh, isomorphism convolutional layer, some convolutional layer, and then readout layer. And we mentioned here the uh, concatenation of hidden dimension is supposed to be the uh, output of the network. So uh, in the data set, I think we can find some data set like molecules data set. Let me try that out. I'm not sure it's, is it working or not, but for doing that, we need to import from Torch data set. So it's start downloading some data. It's called molecule data set. And that molecule data set, we will go to it and see how it is look like. So let me put this up because we have every import here. I can delete this. And yeah, let's see what do we have inside the data set. So data set is that sample is uh, 1478 and there are two tasks. If you say, for example, task, it said FDA approved and city toxic. So it is a data set including the uh, all of the molecules, so some of them are toxic, some of them are FDA approved. And we want to have a classification model that if we pass molecule, it classify those graph as toxic or as FDA approved. So we have this model, but this model doesn't have any task. If you go back, here, there is a place here called tasks. And this is very important because we have in graph neural network, we have some models and these are just model and simply a neural network. And it's like the way that the hidden representation get updated. But other than that, we need the task. And for example, it's a property prediction task, uh, edge prediction, context prediction, angle prediction, many, many things we can have on the graph. We need, we need just to pass a graph and uh, we set a model to a task and that would be it. So for example, we wanna have a property prediction. Property prediction is, it said, this class is also compatible with semi-supervised learning. Yeah, so, I've also mentioned in one of my videos that the graph neural network, when we have some sort of uh, knowledge passing, message passing through the nodes, uh, we have some sort of uh, semi-supervised learning because the relation between nodes already uh, in the data set uh, are giving us some information and updating those uh, hidden, hidden state. It's like we have some some part of the target. So if we search for something like graph or GNN or semi supervised learning, so they mention here most GNN are deliberately designed semi supervised learning tasks where supervision information labeled node plays the important role of the enhancing distinguishability. So as I said, we have some nodes. 
and each node has some maybe a label in the node classification problem but uh, the way that we design the network is like we already are giving uh, most of the thing to the model if you don't even label nodes some of the nodes doesn't have any label based on the connection of the graph the graph can understand that this is uh, this has a similarity with some other parts of the data that already has label so this is called uh, usually graph network usually called semi-supervised learning task so if you back here for property prediction so property prediction it get a model and what we want to do is we have a graph and based on the node feature and maybe edge connection stuff like that we want to understand is that graph representing specific things for us or not so if you want to look at this problem not only with the chemical engineering and uh, chemical science and drug discovery stuff like that we can look at it in different way for example suppose a document and we want to extract some information from it and we want to classify those document based on the information extracted so there are other tasks like edge prediction angle prediction or multi-binary classification uh, not not property prediction so this is like a not classification and interaction prediction which is very interesting and I, I will try to walk through some of them and I'm also not professional in this so we will learn together and let's see what we can do with it we need to pass a model we need to say what is the task a task is the a string or list of a dictionary we need to define the criterion and for criterion I think we can use the binary cross entropy and uh, yeah it said we can use MSE binary cross entropy cross entropy and we need to have a metric and metric can be MAE or MSE uh, this is AUC I think AUPRC is the precision recall curve and there is another AUC it's called AUROC which AUC coming from the ROC curve so we can use these two metrics for our task based on the documentation that we have and it said number of NLP number of classes it's optional I think based on the task maybe number of classes can be determined we will have graph construction model uh, and also we want to see the output or not so let's create a task for that task I want to say we have a task coming from coming from tasks and the name was property prediction I can copy and paste it from here not have any error and I can pass the model I said task is data set that tasks as we've seen above and we have the criterion which need to be BCE and we have a metric and metric is I want to use both AUC coming from ROC curve and precision recall so it would be AU precision recall and AU uh, ROC okay so that would be the task and let me see I have imported task or not so we have only data set I think beside of model we can define also tasks yeah so we have tasks and if we come down just to cleaning this if I run this another time that would be better I can say what is the lens of this data set so it is loaded inside how we can get the data and is this what is the type of this type of data set this is a clone text uh, what I'm thinking is we can split that data to train and test train validation and test and because we have the lens I think we can set 
maybe 80% of the data for training, 10% for validation, 10% for test. So for doing that, I can define this. So I get training size, validation size, and also the rest would be for the test size. And using the torch command, I can say uh, torch utils data random split. I can say data set with this lens. I want to get training or with a say train set, valid set, and test set. We need to import torch and let's do that. Import torch. Okay. Come down here. We do this. So we have a train set now. So now if I go here and type train set, we have a subset. So this subset can go to the data loader in the torch, like torch utils data data loader. And then we, we can get the generator of the data loader and see the data. That's the way. So that data set basically, so it's the same version of the, as the torch data set. So I can say, just, just to show you, I can say torch that data, uh, sorry, utils that data that, and by having that data loader, I can pass, for example, train set, just to show you. So this is, this is a data loader. I can say train loader. When I have a data loader like this, I, this is a generator, so I can say sample in that train loader and uh, just want to break and print the first sample. Okay, it said batch must contain tensors, but it found torch, torch data molecule. So. Yeah, seems uh, the way that we need to train is not like that. I'm I'm going to the repository of torch date torch drug and just want to check how they are loading that data set because that is in interesting for me. Uh, not inside the Docker torch drug. There is a core and there is engine. I think training is in the engine. So they get a train set, and from that train set, just want to see, are they converting that to the data loader? Yeah, so they have their own data loader. I just want to do this, because when we have this data loader, then what we can do is enumerate through the data loader, and we will get the batch. Okay, torch direct that data. Interesting. So seems like instead of having torch.util, stuff like that, they have... I think we have data, so we can have data, data loader. Yes, and now we have the data. So we don't need the torch utils. Uh, so train, uh, test set is same as the, I mean, data set is same as the torch data set, but data loader is different, is their own data loader. So this is, a, this is an, as an example. We have packed molecule. There are a number of atom, number of bonds, and their label is it fda approved one or toxic zero so this means this molecule is not toxic if i come here again and now i have my packed molecule i can say edge list i guess so yeah so that's the graph we have edge we have uh it's called atom i can i can say they are node so we have node edges they're bound, the type of the node, uh, type of the edges. And then we can have number of nodes. We already have the atom. As I said, the whole thing we, we are talking here can be applied like that data set uh, we trained, converted to the data loader. That can also be on a graph, not only a packed molecule. So this is just for showing you that how this is look like. And because I don't want to see all of them, 
this is just for showing purpose okay so we can go to the next part so we have the data but now we know the number of parameters uh, I can say we know the number of input dimension is same as the number of node feature dimension so we have that data set um, I can say trend set and on, on that train set, I can say node feature dimension. I mean, am I right? No. That's a subset. I think we need to pass that whole data set. So, yeah. So by those node feature, if I get shape, it is 30 by 67. So how many node we had uh, is 60 is 30 for this specific molecule. Maybe it has 30 different atoms. And each atom ha has 67 feature. So when we want to create that graph neural network, that isomorphism network, we suppose the input dimension is 67 because we are passing these nodes. And we are saying, get this graph, get this hidden representation of atoms, and create that isomorphic graph. And that would be just a graph. Now we need to create a task. So we want to say, get this model, that a model that gets 67 input and have 64, 64, 64, 64 dimension. Maybe these are just MLP. And ba based on the paper, it seems it is just MLP because if you see in the paper down here, yeah, there is readout and uh, concat. And here they're mentioning MLP. So I'm supposing the things that are applying here is MLP and each time they have batch normalization and they concat the representation as the output. So we want to train a model based on this. And for training the model, now we have the task. Now we need to create the solver, uh, an optimizer. And for optimizer, we can use the PyTorch optimizer. So I can define optimizer, say torch that optim and we're gonna use Adam. We can use different optimizer here. And now we have task here. I have something like task uh, by getting parameters. I will get number of parameters that this task has. That would be a generator. So if I get the list of this, because each layer of this model has different things. So this will give us like we have this parameter containing uh, this tensor and then we have other parameters of the model so we should get some idea about the parameters of the model that during the back propagation will be updated so this is exactly what we need when we want to pass uh, or create an optimizer so here we need to pass those parameters and we need to define learning rate if, if we don't want to use the default one so i'm thinking to follow the documentation for this kind of model and then we need to define a solver so we need to define a solver we say the core so remember we, we went to the core and then engine so we need to be sure that the core is imported here so we have torch models, uh, torch drug, import models, and we import core also. And here we can say engine. And engine get the task that we wanna work on. We have the training set, we have the validation set, we have the test set, we have the optimizer, and batch size I can set, for example, 32 for now. And I'm saying use my GPU number zero. I have four GPU on my laptop. So that will give us a solver. Let's see. Okay, it's a GPU. Uh, sorry, it should be GPUs. Okay. So it will prepare the training set and all the parameters that is required. Uh, the data set indices after shuffling and making that ready. So let's go to the next part. Here, if we have 
like uh, something logger like weight and biases or ml follow we can pass that like logger is equal to weight and biases or ml follow and then i think i'm not sure but i think there should be solver that train yes so it start the training uh, what it is training actually is let me okay so it's done since binary cross entropy reached to this point and that's it oh and we just train it for uh, sorry we just train it for one epoch i forgot that so we need to pass number of epoch and i want to train it for 100 so this would be training on 100 epoch so you'll see that starting uh, showing the GPU memory usage so it means that we can increase the number of batches since it's possible so it's epoch 83 okay cool okay that's a much better than the previous accuracy we got I want to increase this to 200 or maybe even much larger because our GPU let us to train this So that's the way uh, I forgot, sorry, about the number of epoch. And then we can have the evaluation on the test set and validation set, which is this time this number, which is not still good. So what we can do, maybe I can increase this because I guess it is not training well. So what is happening here is we have 67 feature representation for each node. And they will go to the network and we will cre create a, a graph neural network uh, GIN. So it will pass those things, pass those node information, save them, and then concat all of them, pass it to the output. And we have another M MLP at the end for the uh, downstream task, which is classification in this case. And that would be it. So here, still slow and let me increase this a little bit and of course we need to train it for longer epoch maybe the model is not that much good so you see the cross entropy loss is playing around seems like learning rate is too high it need to be a little smaller of course it's overall it's going down maybe batch size also can decrease that is much better accuracy than what we've got before. So learning rate is now better. I want to increase this batch size to make the training smoother. So yeah, you see now training is much smoother. The binary cross entropy is decreasing a lot and now we have the better accuracy. That's cool. So we have 99 and 50 percent AUC on each class so that's one thing we can we can do with this data that is like a property of that neural network what else we can do with that graph and do not uh, suppose that this is only for the chemical engineering it can be applied to any graph just to understand what is happening here is that if we have a graph let me make this this way if you have a node this is oops uh, my bad so if you have a node and this is another node and that is creating a graph so suppose these are all connected and the connection can be different okay this is another graph but for example this is connecting in this way okay there is another graph has more than previous one I mean one node bigger than one so these are three graph um, for example this was toxic this was not this by FDA approved okay so we can extend this uh, problem to other tasks like 
we have a data uh, for example we extracted some data and now we have the knowledge graph of it well, but we want to classify those knowledge graphs like uh, we want to see is that connection is that graph that we created is for which class so that is the graph classification problem we solved with the graph isomorphic isomorphism uh, neural network so another thing we can do is the uh, graph representation we know each of these nodes has a representation and that representation is like a vector you can suppose that so there is a paper here it's called infograph so infograph uh, on supervised and semi-supervised graph level representation learning via mutual information maximization let's read the abstract he said this paper studies learning the representation of whole graph in both unsupervised and semi-supervised scenarios. Graph level representation are critical in variety of real world applications such as prediction, the, predicting the properties of molecules and community analysis in social networks. Traditional graph kernel based methods are simple yet effective for obtaining fixed length representation for graph, but they suffer from poor generalization due to handcrafted design. There are also some recent method based on language model, graph to vector, but they tend to only consider certain, certain uh, substructures. Inspired by recent progress of unsupervised representation learning in this paper, we propose a novel method called infograph for learning graph level representations. We maximize the mutual information between the graph level representation and the representation of substructure of different scales, for example, nodes, edge, triangles, by doing so, the graph level representation encode aspects of the data that are shared across different scales of substructure. Furthermore, we further propose infograph and an extension of infograph, infograph star, an extension of infograph for semi-supervised scenario. Infograph star maximizes the mutual information between unsupervised graph representation learned by infograph and representation learned by existing supervised methods. As a result, the supervised encoder learns from unlabeled data while preserving the latent semantic space favored by the current supervised tags. Experimental results on the task of graph classification and molecular, molecular property prediction show that infograph is superior to the state-of-the-art baseline and infograph store can achieve performance as the state-of-the-art model. So basically, they are saying this way, that if you have graph A and graph B, we have uh, some encoder for each node. We will get a new representation for each node. And by, by having those, let me a little zoom in. By having those, we will have a readout and we will, we will get a graph level representation. So we can say this is graph A representation as just one vector. And we have graph B representation. And um, for each node of this graph B, we can have a discriminator to see is there any difference between graph A and graph B nodes or not. So this representation of this graph should should have information related to all nodes that when we compare it with this graph, it can understand that these two graphs are similar or not. Back to this problem, how we can define, for example, something is toxic is for now, what we've done based on the GIN method was like we have representation for each node, we pass it through MLP, then aggregate all of the results passed through the network and concat them and pass them through another NLP and have a classification. But uh, this is exactly the same as we convert not only this node, but the whole graph to the representation, so whole thing can be defined by a fixed length representation. And by having that, we are saying that all of these can be defined just by a vector. And when we have a vector, that would be much simpler when we want to have a classification on those vector. But those representations should, should be um, good enough to create a good discrimination when we want to create, create the classification. So. The problem that now we are 
uh, thinking of is the infograph. Infograph is the unsupervised way of doing that. So it maximizes the mutual information between the graph level and node level representation. So we will get in infograph, we will get a graph representation. And for each node representation, we compare this. We, for example, we want to uh, have an unsupervised way. So we will get a graph representation of this. And for each node, we, for this graph or another graph, we have the node representation. So we compare these two if they are coming from same class. And this is semi-supervised so or self-supervised. So we compare this. Uh, and by comparing, we are trying to maximize the mutual information. And by doing that, it learns uh, by distinguishing whether a node graph pair come from a single graph or two different graphs. So we, we will get this representation of a graph and also we, will, we can compare it with the node representation of the same graph. Yeah? So if we have the node representation of this one, so that is the graph. Let me have this here. That is a graph representation. But this is a node representation. Yeah, these are two different things. So when we have this, we can compare these two. Oh wait, this is this way. Okay. We can compare these two and see the mutual information, maximize mutual information, and also the same thing for this one, maximize the mutual information. And if we will learn that is this node graph is coming from the same graph representation or there is a mutual information between this or not. So that would be helpful because based on this model, based on this maximization, we will have a model that that model can, uh, can have a classification but unsupervisedly, self-supervisedly. So we can do it here on the model that currently we have trained. How we can do it is uh, we have inside the models like we did for GIN, we can do infograph. And for infograph, we can pass the model we already created. So that model that we already created and we have trained it is this one, model. So we can pass this model. We can say this is our model. Oh, sorry. We can say this is our model. And then uh, if you want to have it, create separate model of this, that infograph will create a separate model. But if you want to use the previously previously trained one or use the same model, so we can say separate model is false. We don't want to create a separate model. So if you want to see more information about it, we can go to the models. And here we have infograph, self-supervised method. There is a separate model, separate supervised and unsupervised encoder. So if we set it true, the unsupervised loss will be applied on a separate encoder, and the transfer loss is applied between two encoders. And if we say separate encoder, so we will separate that unsupervised and supervised part. So for some of the uh, representation, we already know that these are related to two different things. So that would be helpful. And there are some other parameters like model, loss weight, stuff like that. We don't want to touch them for now. So we will get something uh, different. We will call it info model. Okay, so we have that info model. And we need to define an unsupervised task. So I can create a task. And like what we've done so far, we can say task. Uh, task should be unsupervised. And that unsupervised task, we can pass that uh, info model. This is exactly the same as what we've done in the previous step, but this time this is unsupervised task. Uh, the previously, if you go up, the previous task was property prediction using the GIN. So now we have the unsupervised task, and exactly the same. We know we want to have the optimizer, and we want to uh, solve that. So we want to have optimizer, torch, optim, that Adam, 
and we get that task.parameters exactly same what we've done the learning rate can be for example this and again we need to have a solver and solver will get core.engine and get the task data set on the whole data set we want to train it because this is unsupervised it will not look at the label and because that engine uh, let's let back to the engine what we have with the core engine so we don't have validation set and test set we can pass none and we can pass optimizer then so we pass the whole data we don't have these two and we can pass the optimizer GPUs is exactly same and batch size also batch size is 256 and yeah now we can say solver.train this time I remember that we should pass number of epochs number of epoch and should be 100 for example and that's it let's see so what will get from this model if you see there is a mutual information we are maximizing it and it is getting larger and larger and this is unsupervised yeah these are completely two different idea uh, we don't want to make them like combine them together of course it's using the previous model because it needs some sort of graph neural network and this infograph is just like a wrapper to the model and uh, for applying that unsupervised task so far we have seen two different methods another another thing that we can see is the attribute masking so if, if we see uh, so far we've seen that we get the node representation we get the graph representation forgot about forget about this two terminology for now another thing we can see is suppose that I have this graph and I mask this I say there is a note here but I don't want to tell you what it is based on the feature I give you can you predict what should be and there is a lots of uh, advantage if we, if we can do it for example we can predict uh, a connection that this node usually connect to what or if we have like unsupervised data or uh, data that is not completely gathered like from social media so we can guess uh, which node is here or also it can be used for it's called attribute masking uh, it's like the predicting the atoms type in molecule graph from randomly masked nodes for example we have a molecule and we don't know which molecule we need to add here to have a we say for example this is toxic what can i add here i want to create a toxic molecule so and it can say for us for example add the hydrogen here and you will create this a toxic or i give it again to it it can be autoregressive i guess i'm not sure but i'm thinking it can be even autoregressive so we want to say okay i have it this toxic can you make this like FDA approved so it can say yeah you can add like for example a C here just an example yeah so uh, this is called attribute masking and for attribute masking that is exactly the same what we've done so far very similar to what we've done and basically I can come here and uh, let me delete also this I can come here let me type this attribute masking so so far we have seen this model this is a representation we can use any representation that we like if we don't want to use the isomorphic but on top of it and also the readout we can define what, what kind of readout we want to have from each node for example after passing nodes all nodes of a graph to a model uh, we want to have instead of having concat hidden dimension we want to say uh, readout is 
for example, average. So it means take average of each node, each node representation. And also, what else we can do here is uh, for the GIN, we can have the input dimension and the hidden dimension. And also, we can have the edge input dimension because for predicting that, uh, for predicting the attribute masking, we need to know that which connection exists. Because, for example, if this was connected, maybe that prediction can be different. So we need uh, to have connection for the edges. That's why we can say data set. And for data set, we have edge features, edge feature dimension. Yeah, so let me check that. Okay, my bad. It should be a feature dimension. Okay, now it is 18. So there are 18 feature dimension. Each edge has 18 feature. And that would be it. So that is the model. So uh, if you go to the task, that is a different task, yeah? So if you go to the task, we have edge prediction. What do you want to have edge prediction? We want to have attribute masking. And attribute masking is exactly what I've said. So we need to pass the model. And also we can say mask some of the node randomly and how many NLP layer, MLP layer after that we, we need to have. And we don't have a, we don't wanna have a graph construction layer for now. So that would be easy. So we can say task is equal to tasks. And this time attribute masking. And we pass the model and we say mask ratio or mask, it was rate, I think, should be 15, for example. And exactly same as what we've done. So we can get those tasks, have an optimizer. And okay, so for, for solver, because this is also an unsupervised method, because uh, this is, we, don't, we are not classifying nodes. We just have a data and we just randomly mask, mask them. This is very similar to what we've done with the language model because we mask in, for example, in BERT, we mask some of the token there. Here we mask some of the node here and we say predict them. So this is really powerful and the model will learn a representation of the nodes. So that's why we can use the same solver. Okay, we can use the same solver and again we can say train it. Now you see that there is accuracy and there is the cross entropy. And you see the accuracy is getting better and better. So we have a good accuracy on predicting a masked node, which is very cool. And if I do something like this, I will get 88 very similar to what we've got here. So we are good. So, okay, I think so far uh, we have covered the graph rep representation, node representation, mutual information, uh, like info, GNN, and also the isomorphic uh, graph neural network for classifying graphs. And we have other things to cover. I think we can leave it for the next session. If you like this video, please put a comment or like the uh, video and also subscribe. That will give me a sign that I should continue on this approach rather than just reading the paper. Thank you and have fun.